Welcome, everybody. We're going to talk about how do you go about cracking behavioral interviews for product managers. If you're an aspiring PM or a current product manager, this session might be helpful for you if you're going in for some behavioral interviews. The session is going to be very practical. We're going to talk about some nitty gritties. We're going to talk about how do you go about the actual process of going through a behavioral interview for PMs. My name is Ravi Dillon. I'm a product lead at Amazon. I have about 15 years of experience across product, engineering, and consulting. We'll cover some preparation tips before you go into the interview. How do you answer questions when you are in the interview? Some additional tips for success, um, all from my past experience. I'll also do a quick one question mock interview as a demonstration for you folks. And then we'll talk about what to do after you're done with your behavioral interview. It's very important that we understand that the recruiter is really your friend. A lot of us hesitate to reach out to recruiters thinking we're not sure what sort of, of an impression we might leave on the company. But if you think about it, recruiters actually have a certain number of positions to fill. And they are trying to get you into that position. And if you're successful, it only lowers their workload. They are your friend. You should leverage them. Reach out to them and ensure that you understand what's the expectation from each interview that you're going into. If you're going into an interview with a big tech company such as Amazon or Google, recruiters will already reach out to you. They'll provide you some details. But if you're going into other companies where this might not be such a standardized process, it's on you to reach out and get details from the recruiter. If you have more than two interviews, I would suggest breaking them up over multiple days. From my experience, it only helps if you have some time in between, between your interviews. So in my case, for example, when I interviewed at Amazon, on day one, I had a couple interviews, and day two, I had a couple more interviews. At the end of day one, I was able to get a feeler as to how my interviews went. I was able to come back to the drawing board, think through some additional stories from my past experience, and then use those new stories that I had recently crafted from my past experience in my interview on day two. It gives you time to be ready. It also gives you preparation. So never hesitate to ask the recruiter to give you time between interviews as well as split interviews over multiple days. It only helps. I cannot overemphasize the fact that practice makes perfect. It's a cliche, but especially in behavioral interviews, once you actually do a mock session and you have somebody hear you out, that's when you really find out whether you're able to convey the message that you are trying to to the other, other person effectively or not. I would suggest finding friends, family members. If you can't find those, reach out to people on Lewis Lynn's Slack channel. If you don't know how to find that, just do a Google search uh, saying Lewis Lynn's Slack channel, and you can find that. Create an account, go on there and find partners who are trying to also interview for PM behavioral interviews. Practice will really, really help you get ahead of the game. Practicing by itself is not going to be of much help if you do not acknowledge and work on the feedback that you're getting back from those practice sessions. So my suggestion would be, once you go through a couple mock interviews with somebody, take the feedback from them, come back and think about how you can implement that feedback into your pitch the next time you go into a mock interview or an actual interview. It's very essential that you start to acknowledge the feedback that you're getting in some of these mock interviews if you want to get better at your future uh, interview sessions, both actuals as well as uh, mock interviews. Let's talk about stories. Um, if you're a product manager, uh, you, of course, know that companies ask you questions such as, tell me about a time when. The expectation here is that you'll have a certain number of stories from your past experience, things that you have done 
uh, in your professional experience to narrate to the interviewer. If we talk about Amazon, for example, in my experience, uh, you should go in with about 15 to 18 stories based on their leadership principles. So look at the leadership principles and think back in your own experience, what stories you can bring up and narrate to the interviewer. In my Amazon interview, I went in with, I believe, 12 to 14 stories. And by the end of day one, I had two or three interviews and I was already feeling that 12 to 14 inch stories were not enough which is when I sat down that same evening, thought back and put on paper some more stories from my background and, and experience. And I actually used those stories on day two of my interviews. So if you're going for Amazon, trust me, you'll need 15 to 18 stories because Amazon also recommends that where possible, you do not repeat your stories in the interviews. It's okay to repeat it once, uh, but not too much. If you're interviewing for other companies outside Amazon, I would recommend having at least five stories ready. Let's talk about some of the common topics that are asked in these behavioral interview questions. From my experience, I've noticed that there are at least four common topics that are asked. Number one being conflict resolution. The interviewer might ask you, talk about a time when you had a conflict with a colleague. How did you go about it? Or tell me about a time when you worked with engineers and there was a challenge that you had to overcome. Or they might ask you, tell me about a time when you made a mistake. Another favorite question of interviewers is, what product are you most proud of? What do you think has been your best product so far? And how did you go about launching that product? In my experience, these are the most common topics. Of course, this is not a comprehensive list. There can be many, many more topics that can, come, that can come up in interviews. But if you're doing nothing else, I would recommend going ready with at least these four common topics um, it, for your interviews. When you're writing down these stories, and I suggest actually writing these stories down on either a piece of paper or on a Google Doc or any other uh, Word Doc or mechanism that you use, there are four important aspects that I like to highlight in my stories, and this is all from my experience. Number one is you should bring out how complex that situation was that you're trying to narrate to the interviewer. It shouldn't seem like that it was a very easy situation. If you're talking about a very easy situation, I would suggest think hard and pick some other story from your past experience where the situation was complex and you had to navigate that situation so that you can convey to the interviewer how adept you are at navigating difficult and complex situations at work. Second aspect, data analysis or logical reasoning. In pretty much any scenario or situation that you talk about in an interview, more often than not, there is some sort of data analysis involved or some sort of logical reasoning involved as to why you thought a certain way. I would suggest you try to highlight that aspect of your approach in your story. Talk about any data analysis you did or the approach that you used to reach a conclusion that you eventually presented to your leadership or what have you. Third aspect is about stakeholders. For a product manager, stakeholder management is bread and butter. And the interviewer is out there trying to find out if you are good at stakeholder management. How do you go about talking to several stakeholders that you have to on a daily or a weekly basis? Come up with stories where you can bring out the your role in managing and navigating stakeholder relationships and the challenges that you faced and how did you go about handling all of those challenges. And then finally, fourth aspect, talk about the impact that you brought to the table in that story. If you think hard enough, every single situation that you might want to give a story on, there would be some sort of an impact that you brought to the table. That's what the interviewer is wanting to hear. So impact is a very essential part of that whole story. Um, and I would highly recommend that you try to cover 
all of these four aspects, complexity, data, stakeholders, and impact in your story. And then finally, try to write your stories for two to three minutes per story time frame. There are people who are more inclined toward one minute per story, and then there are people who are inclined toward a five minute per story. In my experience, I've found that two to three minutes per story is an ideal amount of time. It gives you enough time to convey the challenge that you were navigating and how you came up with a solution. At the same time, it's not too long for the interviewer. So I think two to three minutes per story is an ideal time frame. You can definitely tweak that time up or down as you feel comfortable and you get feedback from your mock partners. Um, but that's been my experience. Now let's talk about once you get to the interview, you're in the interview, how should you go about actually answering a behavioral question? There are multiple ways to do it, but this is my way and it's really helped me and I hope it'll help you as well. So the moment a question is thrown at you, um, tell me about a time when something. The first thing I would do is, I would want to take time to think. I would not want to jump to an answer because if you answer immediately, there is a likelihood that your answer would not be as structured as it can be, as not as thoughtful as it can be. So I would typically say, oh, that's a great question. And give me a second to think. Take the time to think. A lot of us feel nervous or hesitant when there is silence in the room during an interview, even a virtual interview. I'm gonna tell you that silence is totally okay. It's totally normal. Interviewers would be totally expecting you to take the time to think back about some situation that they want you to talk about. So take that time to think, take a deep breath. It will only help your answer to a large extent. What I also do is I take the time and I actually make a note on a piece of paper or on a Google Doc on the side at what's my target time to finish that answer. So imagine you're asked this question, tell me about a time when you had to face a conflict at work. And the time is actually on the clock, say 9.51 a.m. I would just add three minutes to that and I'm gonna say 54 on my piece of paper. So now I have the clock in front of me and I have my target time in front of me. And while I'm narrating those two to three minutes of my story, I can keep a target time of 9.54 and I can go fast or slow based on uh, how my story is progressing. If you're already good at time management, then this is not a requirement for you. But if you're not that good at time management, if you have a problem with going over, or you are way too crisp, then this uh, strategy might help you. It, it's helped me tremendously. Start your story with a punchline. A lot of us tend to start our stories with the background of the situation, which is fine. However, the interviewer usually would be trying to figure out what direction your story is gonna take. They're not clear at the start of your story where this is headed and what should they be looking for in your story. So I would suggest have a solid, strong punchline at the start of your story. It could be something that summarizes the impact that you created. It could be something that talks about some challenges that you faced, but this has to be literally one sentence. It should summarize the thing that the interviewer should be looking for in the following two to three minutes of your story. You must have heard of situation, task, action, result. Um, I usually just think of situation, action, result for my own purposes. But the bottom line is the STAR framework is a really good framework. Um, it's essential to remember that bulk of your time, bulk of those two to three minutes should be spent on the action and the result part of the STAR framework. A lot of us have a tendency to spend almost a minute talking about just the situation on the ground. I would not recommend that. 
I would limit the situation description to a max of three sentences, depending on how technically complex that situation was. Anywhere from one to three sentences for the situation is good enough. And you want to jump into action that you took and the results that came out uh, from that story as soon as possible. And that should be the key focus of your story. And then finally, I would end my story with a personal learning. No matter what sort of a situation you're trying to describe to the interviewer, there will always be some personal learning as a product manager that you can talk about. Uh, that's a, this is something that is preemptive in the sense the interviewer might anyways ask you, what was your learning? So it is brownie points if you actually bring up your personal learning from the situation without being asked. And just so that I can emphasize point number two, once again, taking the time to think, taking a deep breath and feeling comfortable. I wanna share a verbatim with you that I got during the interview from a principal engineer who interviewed me at a company. He said, I really like how you take the time to think about a story before responding. He was a principal engineer uh, at a mid-sized public company. And he was pleased to see that I was taking that deep breath, 15 to 20 seconds, thinking about the story that I wanted to talk about. And then I would launch into my story uh, and talk through it. Always feel comfortable to ask for time, think about your story, and then go at it. I have some more tips uh, for you. Uh, these might be helpful. I've generally noticed uh, people during mock interviews struggling with a lot of these areas, myself included. Use I in your stories at least 80 to 90% of the times. A lot of us feel that if we talk about we, we're giving the credit to our whole team, which is a good approach. However, in the interview, the interviewer is really looking for the impact that you brought to the table. They're not that worried about what your team did, but they're worried about what you did. So try to create the habit when you're narrating your stories. 80 to 90% of the times, you should be talking about, I did this, I did that, I talked to that person, I brought this idea to the table. And it's totally okay, 10 to 20% of the times, saying, my team and I did this, or we did that. Second, Force yourself to be organized. When you're asked a question or you're asked a follow-on question, try to think if you have a number of reasons that you can provide or if you have a couple points that you want to talk about, state it. You can literally say, out, oh, there are a couple of reasons why I think this way. Number one, blah. Number two, blah. When you do this, it conveys your logical reasoning and your methodical approach to the interviewer, and they really like it. And it also makes easier understanding for them as an interviewer. Third, always go ready with follow -up for follow-up questions to every story that you narrate. One of their favorite follow-up questions is, how would you do this thing differently? So if you're asked about a conflict situation, or if you're asked about a situation where you had to do a lot of data analysis, and you made a mistake, they're definitely going to ask you, how do you, if you were to do it again, how would you do it differently? So have that answer ready already when you're crafting your stories before the interview. And then finally, when it's your turn to ask questions, ask questions that you are genuinely curious about, not because somebody else has asked you to ask, not because they're written on some website, but because you want to know about that job or that company or that team. If you're worried about some layoff that the company did, ask the question. If you are more concerned about the role or the team structure or the promotion process or the culture of the company, ask those questions. Just be genuine and ask what you want to know before you sign up for this role with this company. All right. So I'm going to take. Uh, a few minutes to do a quick one question 
mock interview here for you folks. I'm going to pretend that I'm the interviewer, and then I'm going to answer this like I'm the interviewee. So here we go. Tell me about a time when you had a conflict with a colleague. Oh, that's a good question. Um, give me a second. Let me think back a little bit. All right, let me talk about a time when I had a conflict with my engineering manager involving lack of resources and a time-sensitive product launch and how I found a creative way to roll out this $3 million product. In my previous job with XYZ Company, based on my customer knowledge and market research, I sensed an urgent opportunity to roll out a brand new product A that would not only retain customers, but would also bring an additional dollar for the company. I ran my idea with my leadership and consulted my engineering manager, Dave, in parallel. However, Dave was totally not okay with taking on work for product A, since the team was already busy with product B, in addition to an internal platform migration project. Despite a couple conversations, I realized we were unable to move the needle, resulting in a complete deadlock between Dave and me. I came back to the drawing board and started looking at the projected adoption metrics for my proposed product A, as well as the criticality associated with the platform migration project. I concluded that while the migration was absolutely critical for external facing payment systems, the internal systems were not so time sensitive and the impact of not migrating was limited. Similarly, I found that only type A customers were expected to adopt my newly proposed product A in large numbers as opposed to type B customers. This meant that I could actually delay the launch for type B customers. So I presented my idea with the associated criticality and the impact metrics to date. I also included in my proposal the expected revenue uptick if we were to if we were able to launch product A with urgency and how it would help make our customers' life easier. At the end of my presentation, I could immediately see empathy and support in Dave's eyes. He understood the importance of what I was trying to achieve and that I was doing my best to help the customer while saving his team from being overloaded. I was able to bring Dave on my side. Fast forward 12 months, we not only completed the migration, but also launched product A and brought in $3 million in revenue and 8% improvement in CSAT. My learning from this episode was that conflicts are normal, but as long as I can try to understand where the other person is coming from and do my genuine best to find a common path forward, I can resolve any conflict. All right. So we just did a quick mock question and answer. Let's see what we try to do here. This was not a perfect answer, by the way. It's also not a real situation. I completely made it up. Uh, any answer can get better with time, and so can this one as well. Um, but I tried to hit a few points here. This was not a chat GPT style, polished, scripted response. This was a normal human speaking. Um, with some emotion attached because the situation was challenging and I have gone through it hypothetically. I presented this as a developing storyline. I started off with a sequence of events um, and I set up this uh, situation, talked about what I did and then eventually the results that came out of that. So this became like a storyline and it creates anticipation on the interviewer's end to hear what's gonna happen next. I tried to start with a punchline. I ended with a personal learning. I tried to hit all four aspects that I mentioned before, the complexity of the situation, the data analysis I did, the metrics, uh, the stakeholder management, as well as the impact that I was able to create. I tried to limit my answer to between two to three minutes. And I tried to provide, provide enough detail, but not too much. These are some of the things I tried to do in this answer. Um, and I would suggest you try to do some of these things in your answers as well, because it just makes it better. Now, let's quickly talk about what to do after you're done with your behavioral interview. Get feedback wherever possible. Not every company is going to give you feedback, but some companies will do if you ask. 
it will be helpful if you get that feedback. You can use that toward your next actual interview or your mock interview to get better with time. And if you don't make it through the interview, don't take it personally. Remember, in the job market, there might be several dozen people trying to get the same job. And at some point, it might no longer be a case of merit. It might be a matter of chance as well. So keep doing your best. Get the feedback. Keep practicing. Don't worry. If you don't make it this time, you will make it the next time. So don't take that feedback personally. Just try to get better and try to work on that feedback. And remember, if you haven't failed, you're not trying hard enough. Thank you. You can reach out to me on my LinkedIn, linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Ravi Dillon one. Thank you. Have a good day.